Tell your other neighbor, aspire higher. Aspire for more. You know, the Lord, I was, when, I, when the Lord told me this, I was wondering, ah, I said, Lord, okay. You know, we, we've entered March, and March is the beginning of spring. You know, if, if you've noticed, the birds are chirping in the morning. You're hearing them, you know, singing their songs and communicating the way they're communicating. So the seasons are changing. And just as they're changing in the physical, so are the seasons changing in the spiritual. And the Lord is asking, is telling you and I to aspire for more. He's telling you and I to aspire higher. I, I wonder if any of you have read Oliver Twist, the classic. And Oliver Twist is known for... What did he say? He wanted some more. You know? And that was in the Victorian era where the poor had to just be, had to be, to, to be secure and satisfied with their lot. And they resorted to theft to get what they wanted. The long, long, I mean, Charles Dickens, Oliver Twist tells the story of, Brit of Britain in, those, in that era. But the Lord, so the Lord is saying that just as Oliver Twist at that time wanted more, he wants you to know that you are not to, to, to restrict and, rest, uh, and stay contained. You are not to be satisfied with the status quo. Well, whatever level it may be, he wants you to aspire for more. For more in him. You know, many receive a, a little thing. They attain a little glory. And they rest. And build a tabernacle and say, I have arrived. And the Lord is there weeping, saying, but I've, ju I've only just started. It's not, you're not, you haven't even arrived. And so the Lord says, he said, tell my people to aspire for more. And I don't know where you are, what it is, but the Lord is saying, aspire for more. And so this is our year of transformation. He wants you to transform your thinking, renew your mind. Because he's able and he is willing. He is able and he's willing. You know, many limit God in their minds. They're so easy to say, I can't. Or it's not possible. But who said? When the Lord has already told us that I, you can, he says you can do all things. So if God, he didn't say you can do some things. He didn't say you can do a few things. He said you can do all things through Christ. That strengthens you, that gives you the strength. So you're not relying on your strength. So you come to him and say, Lord, in my weakness, I come to you, Lord, to do with me what you want. But we need, the Lord wants you to renew your mind, transform your thinking, and come on board with him because there is so much more. There is so much more. And so we will, we, will, we, the, we will aspire higher. The Lord wants you to aspire higher. And there are three areas we'll look at. It's not exhaustive, but these are the three the Lord um, is going to cause us to focus on today. In communion with the Father. He wants you to come, aspire higher in communion with the Father. Uh, aspire higher in vision. That is seeing what He is revealing. And He wants you to aspire higher in service, doing what he says, what he says, doing what he shows you. So we'll start with communion with the Father. So if we look at verse 11 of this Jeremiah chapter 1, it began by saying, at least in my version, the New American Standard, it says, and the word of the Lord came to me, saying, and the word of the Lord came. So the Lord wants you to create Prioritize time environments to hear him. Because the word of the Lord came to him because he was able to hear. The Lord wants you first and foremost to create prioritize, prioritize environments to hear God. So 
but it therefore implies that you're not reading your Bible when you're going, you're so tired and exhausted. Because he speaks to us in various ways. Sometimes he speaks to us through his word. He wants you to, in communing, in aspiring high in your, communi- in your communion with the Father, you've got to avoid distractions. So those of you that love your gadgets, switch them off. They won't spoil forever. Put it on do not disturb. The world won't end. If you're a busy housewife, wake up earlier than others and spend that have that space to hear God. Avoid distractions. Another one the Lord said, tend your altar. In communion with the Father, you know, it's so awesome today, the man of God started off by talking about us spending our time, that asking the Lord to use us, to spend us. What is your love? What is your love for God built on? The Lord wants you to tend your altar. You may say, what does that mean? If the job that we read, he, if you, if you, if you see, if you had read that job one that we, we read, he said that he offers sacrifices for his children regularly. I want us to, to define an altar. I want us to look at Exodus chapter twenty, verse twenty-four, because an altar is a place of sacrifice, of slaughter, of offering. A place of, 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 of sacrifice, of offering and slaughter. Exodus 20 verse 24. If someone sees it, please read. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. An altar of earth you make, uh, shall you make, shall make for me. I'll study. Yes. yes. An altar of earth you shall make for me, and you shall sacrifice on it your burnt offerings and your peace offerings, your sheep and your oxen, in every place where I record my name, I will come to you and I will bless you. Thank you. Hallelujah. So we're seeing there in that scenario, the altar was something that was being made. But the key thing I want us to pick up that the Lord said that I will, wherever my version says something about he will remember you, wherever you remember him. He will come and bless you. And so your altar is your place where you will seek to remember God. Because he wants to bless you. And I'll give a few examples. Or even before I give the examples, let's even consider. Let's look at Romans chapter 10, 12, verse 1 to 3. A scripture we know. Then bear in mind that the altar is the place where God wants you to remember him because ultimately he wants to bless you. The minister in the morning talks about this. He talked about us being living sacrifices. Has anyone arrived at Romans 12, 1 to 3? And so, dear brothers and sisters, Romans 12, 1 to 3. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. Give your bodies to God. Let it be a holy and living sacrifice. Remember we said the altar is a place of offering, sacrifice and slaughter. So you're giving your body. You want God, you want to remember God. You want to, you want him to bless you at that place and point of remembrance. Give your body as a living and holy sacrifice. The kind he will accept. When you think of what he has done for you. Ah, yeah, yeah. So we're seeing. So when you see, think of what he's done for you. I like this version. Is this too much to ask? Ah, yeah, yeah. Do not copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Thank you. What verse is that? Mm. Verse 2. Continue, please. Then you will know what God wants you to do. 
and you will know how good and pleasing and perfect Shaka. his will really is. Mm. Hallelujah. So we're, we're talking of an altar. We're talking of the fact that the Lord wants you in communion with him, in aspiring higher in communion with him. He wants you to tend your altar. And know that it's not necessarily that earthen, you know, some, 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 some physical artifact that we're creating. But he's, bring, he's asking you, because remember, we are his temple. We are his temple. Uh, and he, the Holy Spirit resides in us. But then there's something we mentioned today. Our hearts. Of this temple, the bit that the Lord wants to place on the altar is your heart. Yes. Because where your treasure is, you know, the Bible says that where your heart is, is where your treasure is. Hallelujah. So if you love God, it's dependent on the state of your heart. You love him or not, it depends on the state of your heart. What's your mind towards God? What's your heart towards the things of God? Tend your altar. And I'll give us a few examples. Oh, before that, let's look at Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9, just to get one more element. So we know that we're going to Revelation because the altar is not just in the Old Testament, we've got it also in the New. Revelation 9, we want to look at 1 to 5. Or is it, yeah, Revelation 8, sorry, 1 to 5. 8. 8. 8. 8. Yeah, 8. 1 to 5. Revelation 8, 1 to 9. 1 to 5. 1 to 5. Yes, please. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. Then another angel, having a golden censer, came and stood at the altar. He was given much incense, that he should offer it with the prayers of all the saints upon the golden altar, which was before the throne. And the smoke of the incense with the prayers of the saints ascended before God from the angel's hand. Then the angel took the censer, filled it with fire from the altar, and threw it to the earth. And there were noises, thunderings, lightnings, and an earthquake. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So we're seeing something going on in heaven. So there, 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 there is an altar. Just because we know the temple that was erected is symbolic of what's going to be in the New Jerusalem, in, 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 in heaven. So there is an altar. And the key thing I want us to see there is that there, there's fire on the altar. And the Lord wants your, the fire on your altar to burn. So remember, everything in the old is symbolic of the new. Remember in the Old Testament, when they're offering the sacrifices of the animals and the bulls and the grain, the fire, the burnt offering is always to remain burning on the altar. And morning and night, if you go to Leviticus, they were to make sure that the fire was burning. What does that mean to you? Your, the fire of your, or your altar needs to be burning so much so that the intensity of God's power emanates from you as is required in this season and this time. And so what your altar, remember we say your altar is because you're remembering God and you want him to bless you. We'll look at three scenarios of an altar so you, so you, can, you, can, you, you can relate to the fact that the altar, you as a living sacrifice, you may, you, it may be your altar of prayer. Genesis chapter 8 verse 20. Genesis 8 verse 20. In this scenario, Noah, the Bible tells us that Noah erected an altar. Genesis 8 verse 20. And Noah built an altar to the Lord and took of every ceremonially clean animal and of every clean bird and offered burnt offerings on this on the altar. Thank you. So you know what here? John Noah, they'd now come up the, the, the period of the hundred and X, Y, Z days of the rain have ceased. And he rem they, Noah remembered God. God didn't even ask. He remembered the mercy and the graciousness of God that delivered him and his household and all of them in the ark. And he, he erected an altar to the Lord. 
of offerings, offering to him the, the clean animals because he remembered the instructions of God in gratitude. And what does it say in subsequent verses which we did read and I encourage you to read? The Bible says that God smelt the fragrance of that altar. When you're in your closet talking to the Lord, the Lord you're, you're releasing a fragrance to the Lord. He smelt it and what did he do? He now said he made a covenant that he would never destroy the earth with, rain, with water again. And the rainbow is in the, in the sky till today as testament to the God's pro promise and God's covenant. Abe Noah remembered God. He remembered God's goodness in his life and built an altar. And God consequently blessed. Mankind, we're all partakers of our blessing. Genesis 13, verse 18. Another erection of an altar. Genesis 13, verse 18. Then Abraham broke camp and moved his tent and came and settled by the grove of the great terebinth oak trees of Mamre, the Amorite which are in Hebron, and there he built an altar to honor the Lord. Hallelujah. So he built an altar to honor the Lord. What had happened? Something significant had happened in that chapter 13. That was the time where Abraham had, had, had now obeyed God and separated from everything that was hindering him in God's assignment and God's purpose. That was when he parted ways with Lot. Remember, God told him to leave, leave um, Haran, and he, Earl of the Chaldees. But he left, carrying his father and his nephew. And God's promise was far from being made manifest. But by that time, he now parted with Lot. The Lord then appeared to him and said, now, look and see. And as he saw, he said, so shall your descendants be. And he erected an altar because God had now said, he remembered God and God blessed him. And we see the fulfillment of that word for today. Notice, in erecting the altar, it is a, it's a point of remembering God because God will consequently bless you. He said, I will bless you when you erect that altar. And we see, the last one I want us to look at, Exodus 17, 15. And Moses built an altar and named it, The Lord is my banner. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. So, in this case, again, Israel had left Egypt en route to the promised land. And there had been a battle. They were on their own, minding their business, going where God was taking them. And Amalek came out of nowhere to start fighting with Israel. In the journey of life, don't think that the enemy has to have permission to fight you. They will come along. Because that's just, that's just what happens this side of glory. And so they came along. But what happened? The Lord gave uh, Moses instruction to Joshua as to what to do in fighting Amalek. He then sat on the stone. He raised his hands up. And as long as his hands were in the air, the battle was in their favor. And it, because, you know, you, we, uh, the flesh is the flesh, he then had Aaron and her holding his hands up. And as long as they were up, they won. And the Lord, he then built an altar. Because the Lord had said, you see, the, the degree to which you value God's word is the degree to which it works in your life. The Lord has said that from here, here to now, that Amalek will be destroyed. Because they rose up against you. God proclaims things into our lives. And the degree to which we hold is the degree to which he manifests. He then he honored it. He remembered God and erected an altar. And called it the Jehovah Nissi. God is my banner. And if you remember and know that God is your banner. Till today we know that God is our banner. He goes before us. He is the banner under which we walk. Which we, we stand. Mom? He is. It's his banner. The shield of his name that we go, that we walk under. 
And so, in communion with the Father, the Lord wants you to aspire higher in tending your altar. Think about how what, what is the state of your altar. There isn't time to focus on the altar at the moment, but I think we will need to talk about it because, yeah, the Lord is interested in us having our altars. That place that we talk, we, we fellowship with the Lord. Those places. And how regularly do we renew that altar? We renew the altar with our time, with our talents, with our treasure. If you think of in the, in the, in, in the, in the, in the kingdom of darkness, there are times where the altar needs its own sacrifice to keep the tenets of the altar going. How much more in the kingdom of God we neglect the principles of the kingdom. Spiritual laws still apply irrespective. How do you tend the altar? Some of you are so tight and you wonder why you don't prosper. You hold on to one P like the whole world depends on that one P. And that's why you're, you, know, you look at the lights and you don't see any sign of God's glory, God's goodness. But the altar requires your offering. It requires your talents. What has God given you? How many times do we sing, with what do we do with what God has given us? It requires our time. How much time do you spend? At the altar, with the Lord, in your workplace, in your home, wherever is your assignment, where is the altar erected there? So that you remember God there and then God consequently blesses you. The second thing, the second thing, ask the Lord for mercy. You know, I, I think we need to respond to this communion with the Father Dates. Whatever it means to you, talk to the Lord, because the Lord wants you to aspire higher. I don't know the area where you are in, your, in, in those three, the distraction, the creating prioritized environments, tend to your altar. Talk to the Lord. Ask Him for mercy where you're, where you're contained and relaxed, or haven't even got any principles or organizations around those areas. Ask the Lord for mercy. Ask the Lord to help you. Mighty God, Shaham Broko City Handa. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord. Help us, Lord, to commune with you, Lord, to prioritize, Father Lord, time, to prioritize environments for you, to prioritize the space for you, Father Lord Jesus, to avoid distraction, to know you are priority, to know, Lord Jesus, that you have called us to be living sacrifices on the altars, Father Lord Jesus, the altars where you want us, you want us to erect in remembrance of you, because you desire to bless us. You desire to show us your will, Haya, your perfect will in those areas to which we erect the altar. Thank you, Lord, as you renew our minds. Thank you, Lord, as you enable us to do the necessary. By your grace, by the enablement of the Holy Spirit, we worship you, Father, in Jesus' name. The second area we want to aspire higher into is vision. Vision, that is seeing what he is revealing. You know, one thing we ask in this ministry, if you are around the evangelist long enough, he will ask you, what will he ask you? What, what is, is the Lord, Lord saying? saying? What is the Lord saying? Because not only are we hearing, we are also to, supposed to be seeing what he is saying. And so, seeing what he is revealing, seeing what he is showing you, the Lord could be showing you things. Because if we see here, the Lord said in verse 11, He said, the, uh, the word of the Lord came to me saying, What do you see, Jeremiah? What do you see? Because when, you're, when God is speaking to you in His word, He is showing you things. When you're sleeping, if He can't get your ears, He will open your eye gates. In your sleep, He will show, he will show you things in dreams. He wants you to aspire higher in seeking understanding, in seeking clarity. Because the things God shows you, there's more to it. There's more to it. You might see a door. 
And you say, oh, I saw a door. Ask God what that door is about. There could be something behind the door. It may be an opening he's creating for you. It may be something he's shutting. Ask him more. And so he saw an almond tree. He said, he said, he said, what do you see? He said, I see a rod of an almond tree. And the Lord said to me, you have seen well. You may wonder what is the importance of an almond tree. <laughs> this our God is so awesome. You know, the almond tree of all trees, it is the tree that blossoms in January and buds, bears fruits in March. It is called the hasty tree. It is hasty because all other plants, I mean, look at the seasons. There's no tree that we can see flowers on at this time. But at, this is the, the third of March. But an almond tree, we had an almond tree there, you will see it blossoming with flowers. And the fruit on it, the almonds are there already in March. So it blossoms in spring. You know, you can get the fruit in it in spring. And so it is called the hasty tree. It's hasty. It's hasty. It is hasty. So he's seen the almond tree. And the Lord is saying, yes. He must have seen the flowers, whatever he saw. But he was able to distinguish that of everything else, this was the almond tree. Implying... It's the no, since it's known to blossom first, the first tree to blossom in spring, the Lord was saying. What does he say here? In verse 12, then the Lord said to me, you have seen well, for I am watching over my words to perform it. Mm -hmm. Just as the tree, the almond tree, is hasty to blossom in spring, so is the Lord in a hurry to bring his word to pass. In your life. It is not by chance that we're in March. March is the third month, it's the, the, the beginning of spring, it is the in it, it is the end of the fourth, it's the last month in the first quarter of the year. If we're talking financial years, it's the last quarter of the financial year. And so, I would, so is the end of something, is the beginning of another, implying we're entering something new. I want you to spend time now to begin to talk to the Lord. What is it? Let's stand up because I see some of us um, want to miss, miss what God is doing. You know, the Lord said, the Lord said, uh, for you have seen well, for I'm watching over my words to perform it. Where in March, what is it that God needs to perform in your life? What is it that God needs to perform in your circumstances? What is it that you need to see? What is it we're coming? One season has ended. Another, we're entering another. What is it that God you need to see? What is it that you know is on the altar? Your altar. What is it that you've been talking to the Lord about? If you've got nothing, at least remember CTMI. Remember our place of worship. Now the Lord is saying, Behold, I am watching over my words and performing. Begin to ask the thank the Lord that as he has spoken, you are receiving it. That he is watching over his words to perform it in your life in this season. Father, we thank you that you're not a man that you should lie. Hey, hey, neither are you the son of man that you should change your mind. Have you not said it? Will you not do it? Have you not spoken? Will you not make it good? Father, thank you that just as the almond tree, Father Lord, was the first and is the first of God to spring, to blossom in spring. Father Lord, we thank you, ha ya ya ya, that you are in a hurry. You are in a hurry. You are in a hurry to bring to pass your word in our lives. Ha ya ke, Father, we trust you. We thank you. Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rekasata, that you will, you are watching over your words and performance, and your word will not return to you, boy. Thank you, your word of healing, your word of deliverance. Your word of provision. Father Lord, every word to your children, today in this season, it is coming to pass. Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, please be seated. And the third thing, the third area where the Lord wants you and I to aspire higher 
is in service. What has God instructed you to do? What has God shown you to do? You know, the Lord opens your eyes to see something. By default, he's giving you an assignment. You know, verse 17 to 19, he now says, this is the Lord speaking to Jeremiah. He said, he said, now gird up your loins and arise and speak to them, all which I command you. Do not be dismayed before them, lest I dismay you before them. You know, when he was saying gird up your loins, some versions will say prepare yourself. And arise. So service is an active thing. You know, you can't serve God. You cannot serve God sitting down, drinking tea and coffee. Service is active. He might remind you that you stop there's someone in hospital. You need you need therefore not to sit on your bed or sit on your chair. I say, Lord, well, they'll be released at some point. Actually, he's wanting you to go there and encourage them and pray for them because there are things going on in the atmosphere in hospitals. And the Lord wants you to go there and change the atmosphere. He may remind you that there is a neighbor and you, you notice suddenly that, you know, the days of milk bottles on the front porch have gone. But you may notice that there's a pile-up of letters or just something see, looks like things are, there hasn't been much activity. You check the Lord that it's for you, for the Lord to be putting that thought in your mind that he wants you to go and knock on the door and say hi. And so we, 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 the Lord is saying aspire higher. Aspire for more. He wants you to aspire for more in him. We, we, we prayed we pray this morning about our lo loving God. We, we prayed about the state of our hearts. Because your heart is, is, is the essence of who you are. Because the degree to which we're like you is the de degree to which our hearts have been renewed and transformed. And so he's saying, so he said to Jeremiah, and he's saying to us, gird up your loins and arise. Prepare, some versions say, prepare yourself and arise. And don't be deceived that preparation is five years, that I'll stay in my place for five years. Because I'm preparing, I have to be ready. You prepare. Whatever God has given you, you're ready for that. But you're, we, our preparation is a continuous thing. So it's saying, gird up your loins and arise. You know, it... It, 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 it depicts, the illusion depicts the, the eastern, those that lived in the eastern countries where they wear long garments and they say gather it together because there is a sense of urgency. There is a sense of speed. There is a sense of resolute, being resolute in being determined to do the necessary. Because you know you can't run or walk fast in a long garment. You will gather it up. The scripture even says concerning, um, uh, what was his name? Philip, isn't it? That was run. Oh, Elijah. Elijah gathered, you know, his cloak, his everything. And he has run the chariots of Ahab. And so, there is, there is a level of intentionality. A level of determination. It's not when the Lord says do. You say, yes, Lord, I'm coming. Two weeks later, you're still coming. Four weeks later, you're still coming. The person that he wanted you to go and visit, that's already been discharged. And probably they were discharged and they went back in because he didn't pray, so there were complications and they went back in. So, service. Um, aspiring higher in service. Gird up your loins and arise. He says, and speak to them all which I commanded you. So you know we're communion. We're aspiring higher in our communion. In communion with God. We're aspiring higher in our vision. So as you're talking to the Lord, he's telling you things. When he's, he's, the things he's telling you are instructions. And we've understood that the instructions of God as we obey them is our blessing. And so 
Gird up your lines and arise and speak. There are things God tells you. As we we're praying this morning, there are things God tells you. You will need to tell people. You will need to speak. And therefore, we need the wisdom of God with which to communicate what he has told us. As the minister was saying, in your workplace, do you see things and you just keep quiet? In your environment, you see things and you keep quiet? Or do you speak? The annals of history have it that Hitler prevailed in what he did because the church was silent. There are things going on that are contrary to the glory to the glory of the nature of God on our watch. What are we doing about it? He says, Gird up your loins and arise and speak to them all which I command you. He says, Do not be dismayed before them, lest I dismay you before them. You know, many a time we don't do things because we are afraid. What would they say? Oh, what would they think of me? They will now think I'm this and that. I'm not what they thought I am. But really, let's look at, before I expand on that, let's look at Matthew chapter 10, verse 28. Matthew 10, 28. Can someone read that, please? Matthew 10, 28. Do not be afraid of those who kill the body but cannot kill the soul. Mercy, Shah. But rather be afraid of him who can destroy both soul and body in hell. Thank you, my sister. So the Lord is telling you and I, so when, you're, when that thought enters your mind, what would they say? Oh, what if this happens? What if that happens? You need to remember that the Lord is saying, do not be afraid. Of those that can kill the body. But he's saying, be afraid, but rather, they, they kill the body, but they're unable to kill the soul. They're unable to kill your soul. They're unable to kill your heart, your mind. They are unable to kill that. But rather, fear him who is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. And so when you've got that in perspective, you'll know that he who is sending you is greater than that perception in the mind. Mm -hmm. So do not be dismayed before them, lest I dismay you before them. Because when we disobey God, we're missing an opportunity for our blessing. We're missing an opportunity for the Lord to be glorified. And remember, everything we're doing this side of heaven is for his glory. He said, let your light so shine before men that they see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It is all for his glory. Our obedience is for his glory. Not just our blessing, but for his glory. And he says, now behold, this is verse 18. I have made you today as a fortified city and as a pillar of iron, and as walls of bronze against the whole land, to the kings of Judah, to the, his princes, to his priests, and to the people of the land. You know, when the Lord sends you, there is a divine immunity. An ambassador is privileged across all borders. And we are God's ambassadors. Just that many a time we don't know. We don't know the jurisdiction. We're under the power that we carry. He said here, that I, he said, Behold, I've made you today as a fortified city. So, a, a city, not just all, an ordinary city, but a city that is fortified. Some seals, remember, they tell us they're fortified with um, folic acid or with iron. That is its strength, and there's something added to it to make it stronger. So, the Lord is saying that the walls of your life are fortified. We read Job, the walls of his life were fortified. There was a hedge around him. So is there a hedge around you? The Lord tells us about that, I believe it's in Zechariah 2, 5, isn't it? So in 5, 2, Zechariah 5, verse 2, that there is, he surrounds us with his wall of fire and his glory is within, as depicted in Zion. And so, he's saying here, I have made you a fortified city. Not just a fortified city, but also a pillar of iron. 
has made you a wall of bronze against the whole land. So wherever God placed you, you have a jurisdiction. And that is why we erect our altars. If you're living in a house, in a community, and the community doesn't know you're present, and there is darkness ravaging that community, that means your altar is silent. Because you should be the sanctification of that community. You should be the protection of that community. And so, he's saying that I have made you as walls of bronze against the whole land. Against the whole land. The whole land. So if you know your jurisdiction extends to the whole land, their ways will be acting. Their ways will be decreeing. Their ways will be speaking to our businesses to open, opportunities to open, lands to open, men and women to hear us. Because you're not there by chance. No one is in this land by chance. Anyone that has migrated to this land is here on assignment. So don't think you're here to sit down morning, from morning to night doing what you think, what you want. He has a purpose, an assignment, an agenda for you. And so he's saying, God, I behold, I've made you today as a fortified city, as a pillar. So if you're fortified, which bullets will shoot and get you? Which arrow will be aimed and, 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 and which... Time? You know, it just won't happen. So you've got to know this. You've got to renew your mind and understand this. And as a pillar of iron and as walls of bronze against the whole land, to the kings of Judah, to his princes and to his priests and to the people of the land, your assignment transcends all men. Therefore, you have the ability to come before whoever God wants you to come before. He has therefore put a, ma a word in your mouth. And the, and, and the degree to which, again, you action this is the degree to which you have aspired higher. Because some of us think that our, our sphere of influence is where, remains where it is. That's not true. That's why the Lord is telling you today, aspire for more. Because there are doors he wants to open, but you've just not knocked at those doors. We've limited God with the things we see, the things we hear, the things we smell, the things we touch. Because you're limiting in your mind. And when you're limiting in your mind, you then go, you don't go forward. You don't reach out. You don't knock at the doors. You know, there's one thing. My husband always says, says knock at every door. And the, Lord, the, one, the one the Lord has for you will open it. If at some point you're not hearing exactly what God is saying. Because some will stay waiting and not acting. And days are passing, weeks are passing, months are happening, years are passing. And we're saying, God, where are you? But God is saying, you've not risen up from where you're sitting. Mm. And so he's saying, and they will, verse 19, and they will fight against you. But they will not overcome you. So we talked about, I, I've forgotten the forum we're in, we talked about persecutions. The minister when was praying this morning talked again, again about afflictions. And here the Lord is saying, and they will fight against you. You see, if these things don't come our way, how do our muscles get strengthened? How do we have a testimony? How can we testify? That this our God is good. That this our God has the power. I told you I was called one night, some minutes past midnight, by the police about my son. Do I know this person? I was relating to me. This is a call no parent will ever want to receive. And I received it, and every minute I was saying, Lord, as I was going, the emotions in my heart, I was saying, Lord, have mercy, have mercy, remember your covenant. Have mercy, have mercy, remember your covenant. And th that is an affliction because, you know, there are many, just was a letter the other day, I've got, I've got an appointment, we've got an appointment in the hospital uh, on Monday, we've now got a, another letter, we've got another appointment on Tuesday. These are not things you expect. You've already planned your weeks. You've got, you know, I've got meetings. I'm chairing. They say, will you chair this meeting? I say, yes, I will. Of course, I'm around. But now I've got to change it. The issue, the point I'm trying to make 
is the fact the Lord says they will fight against you, but they will not overcome you. And that's why the Lord is saying, aspire higher. Aspire for more. Aspire higher in your communion with your fire, with the Father. Aspire higher in vision. Because the Lord is always showing you things. He's telling you things. The thing is, what are we doing? Because He is preparing us for an evil day. He's protecting us. He's, re he's fortifying us for when they fight against you and do not overcome. He says, for I am with you to deliver you, declares the Lord. So we will not say we're not going forward because of the perceived affliction. Because we need to have a testimony. We need to have something to tell the world. So, what does Romans 8 verse 31 tell us? Romans 8.31 When they when, what then shall we say to all these things? If God is for us, who can be successful against us? Oh, 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 who can be? If God, thank you, my sister. What then shall we say to these things? If God be for us, who? Who? can stand against us. Or that person says, who can be successful against us? God is for you. Tell your neighbor, God is for you. God is for you. God is for you. Who can be against you? Who can be against you? No one. No one. And this is the assurance we have. And so the Lord is saying, aspire higher. And, and, and it ends on this because huh, our God is with us. The greater one is with us. But whether we aspire higher, we have no choice, but we have to. Because Jesus must be glorified. Because it's either Jesus, it's either us on the Lord's side or the enemy. But we cannot allow the weaker one to prevail. And so I want us to rise, begin to ask the Lord, where are those areas that I need to aspire higher? Hallelujah. Ask the Lord by His Spirit to show you the areas where you need to aspire higher. Is it in your thought process? Is it in your actions? Is it in your relationships? Is it in your going out and your coming in? Where do you need to aspire higher? Where do you need to aspire for more? Ask the Lord. Tell us, ask the Lord to show you if you don't already know. I hope you know by now. But if you don't, ask the Lord by His Spirit to show you the areas where you need to aspire higher. We started off this morning for those that were here about the uh, loving God. A uh, loving Him. We asked the, the, the question was, what is the state of your heart? Just to be told, just to hear now that the Lord is asking us to aspire higher, to aspire for more. He wants you to be that living sacrifice on his altar, Rata Shaka, that will bring glory to his name, that will understand his perfect will. Have you tended your altar? Have you even got an altar? Are you even erecting those altars in the areas where you want to remember God, that he may bless you? Begin to ask the Lord to let you know the areas where you need to aspire for more. And the three areas we focus on were communion with the Father. The second one was in vision. Are you seeking to see God? Are you seeking to understand what He's saying to you? Are you seeking clarity? Or you do just have a dream? Sleep, see it, and you roll over on the other side and continue sleeping. How about Sheke? How about Cassandra? Are you aspiring higher in service? What are you actually doing in response to God's instructions? Roko Shihanda, you're saying I did it last week, I did it last month, I did it last year. How about Yeah, the things of God are continuous. 
the strategizing of your adversary never ceases. What are you doing? Hayaka, where do you need to aspire higher? Reke Shaha, Father, open the eyes. Open the eyes of your people. Reke Satima Ha. We understood that the Lord is healing hearts. He's healing hearts. He's healing hearts. He's healing it of everything that hinders you from aspiring for more in God. And Father, we thank you for those healed hearts. We thank you for healed hearts. We thank you that you are our priority. Father, you are our priority for you're looking for a people that will put you first. You're looking for a people that will desire you above all else. You're looking for a people that will not compromise. You're looking for a people that will not settle for what the world offers. Will not settle for what circumstances offer, but will commune with you, Reke Shaha, to get higher. Reke Sanda will seek your visions, Reke Sahanda Rabasanda, and speak into manifestation. Roko Sata, your kingdom purpose, will serve you. Raka, running with your assignment, running with your instruction, running with your word. Say, Father God. By the power of the Holy Spirit, I acknowledge that it's not about me, but it's all about you. Father, I'm willing to give up my personal interest for the sake of your instructions, by your divine enablement. Nothing will move me from my assignment. I lean upon you, sweet Holy Spirit, to enable me, to work through me, to walk through me. I come up higher in you, Lord. I aspire for more of you, for more of you, for more of you, Jesus, for more of you, Lord. Father, I come up higher. I aspire for more of you, for more of you, for more of you, for more of you, Jesus, for more of you, Jesus. Lord, we bless you. Lord, we honor you. Father, we ask for more. Father, like Oliver Twist, we ask for more. Father, more of you, more of your spirit, more of the knowledge of you. Father, we ask for more. Father, we ask for more of you. That you, Jesus, will be seen through us. That our world will see you through us. That our environments will see you through us. Our communities will see you through us. Jesus, we bless you. Jesus, we honor you. Thank you, Father. We bless you. If you don't know Jesus, I invite you to make Jesus Lord of your life. The ability to go up higher is in him. For he is the one who is seated on high. Say after me, Lord Jesus. Come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. I believe that the blood that you shed on the cross washed away my sins. I believe that you died. And on the third day, you rose from the dead. And because you rose, I too will rise victoriously and spend an eternity with you. Fill me with your Holy Spirit and give me the power to live for you. I renounce Satan and all his works. Thank you for saving me. If you pray that prayer,